Welcome back to the channel, Packet Heads. Great to see you back. And today I'm going to show you how you can one way decrypt TLS in Wireshark. So before we get into the packets, first let's talk about TLS decryption. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do a client side capture of the session keys. So we're not talking about going to the server and getting some super secret key, nor are we talking about capturing it off the wire like a man in the middle. Instead, we're going to do this on the client side. Now there's other ways that we could do this, but this is the simplest one for sure. Now it's possible to do this with different operating systems and different browsers, but just to keep this video short, I'm gonna show you how to do it in a Windows 10 environment using the Chrome browser. It's just the one that I think I do it on the most and I've had the most success with. So first let's set up capturing those session keys. Now here we can see we're on a Windows 10 box and if I go ahead and go to, in my control panel, I can go to my system properties. From there, I want to enable on the client side an environment variable. So let's go ahead and click that. And under here, I can see the user variables for Chris. To configure one for you, it's pretty simple. All you gotta do is you just say new. And what you're gonna do is you're going to say the variable name will be SSL key log file. So SSL key log file. Under that, you're going to go ahead and let Windows know where to store the session keys. So once we activate this key log file, once I open up Chrome and start to navigate, the client will start to store the, se the temporary session keys locally in this log file. So let's go ahead and say OK. And I'm going to close this down. Now to actually do our trace file. So first, I wanna go in and take a look at that key log. So I already see some sessions being logged in this key log file, which is a good thing if you start to see that. But now let's go ahead and start up Wireshark and actually capture the packets going out to a site. So I'm gonna start up Wireshark and I'm also going to get my browser ready. Now the site that I want to go and hit is a site that we all know and love, and that is Wireshark. So in order to start up my capture, let me go ahead and say Wi-Fi. That's my interface I'm gonna start capturing on. Start to see some packets coming in, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit over in my browser, and I just wanna head out to wireshark.org. Now, once I have hit Wireshark.org, I know that those session keys have been exchanged and established. Then I can go ahead and use those keys for later decryption. Okay, so we've went ahead and launched our site. I'm gonna go ahead and go back into Wireshark. And just to make sure that I captured what I think I caught, I'm gonna go ahead and do a frame contains Wireshark. Now, if I see the DNS traffic as well as some TLS traffic, then I know I got what I'm interested in getting. Now, what I did for you is I went ahead and filtered down that conversation and the key log, just so you have a very simple set to work with as you follow along with me. So now let's go ahead and open this up in Wireshark and take a look. So right away, you can see by these packets, it's simple conversation. I've only got 89 packets here. Here, I'm going out to wireshark.org. Now, I actually have a profile in Wireshark that's called TLS. And there, I like to see the server name and a handful of other things that we can go ahead and populate as we go forward. But if you notice, with our TLS handshake, just to highlight a few things, uh, we're going to talk deeper in TLS on another video. But here on this trace file, so we can see our TCP conversation or our handshake get established, sin, sin, ack, ack. And let's go ahead and take a quick peek at our client hello. So we're going to select the client hello. And what I'd like to go down, down to is to the TLS transport layer security. And this is where I can see my TLS first packet of that handshake. Now, what type is it? It's a client hello, random. Now this is a session identifier and it's interesting, you'll actually see this number if you look in your key log for this session. A couple other quick things, if we come down to the extension server name, I just wanna be sure that I'm knocking on the door of wireshark.org and sure enough, there it is. Now with TLS 1.3, let's notice something. That's all I'm gonna go to on the client hello. If I come down to the server hello, now notice on the server response, I do see, okay, my TCP connection was already established in the handshake. Now this is the TLS part replaying. This is my server hello. This is where we come down and we select our Cypher suite. We say that we wanna use TLS 1.3 and really the rest of the handshake is encrypted. 
So this is just a one round trip setup, one round trip handshake to get a TLS 1.3 session going. But what we wanna do is decrypt this. So how do I do that? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and go up to Wireshark Preferences. Now, if you're on a Windows system, you're gonna find preferences under the Edit menu. So you gotta to go to Edit Preferences. Now from here, this is where I come down to Protocols. Gonna go ahead and expand that, and I wanna come down and find TLS. So I, I can hit the T key to go faster, but just for grins. I'm gonna to go to TLS, and this is where I feed it that keylog file. So uh, Wireshark's asking me, where is the pre-master secret log file name? So I'm gonna go ahead and hit Browse, and then I'm gonna select the log file, gonna say Open, and then I just fed that log file to Wireshark. If I hit OK, now it's interesting in the background, you're gonna see something a little different once you apply this log file. First of all, you notice that we have a couple of extra orange packets. Now, I went ahead and colored all packets that are a part of the TLS handshake orange. Why? I'm in my TLS profile. I wanna see them as a different color. But here I can immediately see more packets there. I don't just see that client hello and the server hello. In fact, the next packet down, if I take a look at packet seven, this is where I can start to see some additional TLS 1.3 information. Now, before, this was all encrypted, but now because we had that log file or we had the session keys for this session, we can decrypt it. So down here, the server says, okay, I'm finished. That's the end of its handshake. The client comes back and it says, all right, I'm finished too. Let's go ahead and get busy. So here I can see this is HTTP 2 that was encrypted in TLS 1.3, and then I had the TCP header, IP header, and so on. Before, I didn't see this get here, but now I can actually see those application transactions. Now, this is decrypted. Now, a couple other things to note, I also have TCP reassembly enabled here, and that's an important thing if we're taking a look at responses coming back from servers. And that's because not only are we dealing with encryption, but we're also dealing with compression. So the application is going to compress data in addition to letting TLS encrypt it. So this is what I mean. If I come down and take a look at that OK, and I can see different messages coming back. But if you jump down all the way down to packet number 57, go ahead and join me there. In this packet, Wireshark reassembled the application response. And if you come down below our hexadecimal view, if you come down here in our packet bytes, you can notice that I have decrypted TLS, reassembled. I wanna to go to uncompressed entity body. And I can see that that's 200K, let's click that. And this is where you're gonna see a bunch of good info. This was all previously compressed and encrypted between the client and the server. And now we have access to it with Wireshark. So that is quickly a simple way how we can capture the session keys on a client, we can feed that to Wireshark, and we can decrypt TLS for our analysis. Thanks for stopping by the channel and I'll see you on another video.